Martin. Uh, Martin Feuille is a modern Afro-American artist. Uh, he is famous for his uh, abstract sculptures and uh, this uh, sculpture is one of his uh, most well-known sculptures. This is the letter for Booker T. Washington. The sculpture is uh, named after Booker T. Washington, who was an American politician, influential educator and black people's rights advocate. Uh, Martin Goyer was born in 1941 and his youth fell into the 60s, the time of so social and cultural revolutions. And Afro-American civil rights movement probably was one of the greatest revolutions at that time. Uh, in the early 60s, Martin Boyer started pictures, uh, started painting in the university, but later he abandoned it as he took more interest in sculptures. He was interested in forms, in shapes, and in creating something with his own hands. Uh, he walked, um, well, he walked a long way from minimalism and post-minimalism to formalism. Uh, the letter for Booker T. Washington was created in 1996. Uh, to create it, uh, the author used the principle of forced artificial perspective, which was very popular in uh, Renaissance arts. Uh, he used a tall 36 feet tree and he split it in a very unusual zigzag form and um, connected two rails with more than 100 rods. Uh, this, well, uh, to create uh, this forced perspective, uh, he narrowed the uh, ladder uh, towards the top and uh, the rug in the bottom is only, well, it's about two feet wide and the rug on the top is about only one inch wide. Mm. Uh, for most people this ladder um, is a symbol of, of a long and complicated path that black Americans had to take to becoming free and equal members of American society. Fantastic. Uh, well, uh, Martin Perrier usually names uh, his works after he has finished them, and this one is not uh, an exception. Um, when uh, thinking about the name for uh, this sculpture, uh, Martin Perrier uh, remembered Booker T. Washington, uh, who was uh, a very influential man and uh, who um, um, well, and whose uh, philosophy was um, uh, gradual progress. So uh, this, uh, to, to Martin Pierre, this uh, seemed to fit uh, this sculpture uh, perfectly, and uh, he named it Letter for Booker T. Washington. Um, what uh, the artist himself likes about this sculpture is that uh, it uh, teaches a uh, history lesson. Because when people see it, when they see uh, its name, uh, they uh, start wondering what uh, uh, stands behind uh, this sculpture. Who is Booker T. Washington? Well, uh, Booker T. Washington was born into slavery in uh, 1856. And um, he was uh, a child of a black woman uh, who worked on a tobacco plantation and uh, an unknown white man. Uh, he took the uh, name Washington um, after um, his uh, stepfather. Uh, as a child, uh, he had a strong desire to uh, study, but uh, at those times it was illegal to educate slaves, and uh, that's why he could only uh, look at uh, white children get an education and uh, in his autobiographical book he even wrote that uh, in those times for him getting uh, to school seemed like getting to paradise. Uh, after the slavery abolition in uh, 18, uh, 50, not 50, uh, 65 after the Civil War, uh, Booker T. Washington went uh, at last to school, then he graduated from the university and uh, um, uh, started uh, his uh, work. He was a very uh, well-known politician, uh, black educator and uh, supporter of black people's rights. Um, his uh, theory was a theory of gradual progress and he used to say that 
uh, to achieve anything you have to work really hard. And uh, he even uh, wrote in his book that he couldn't remember one single day when he wasn't uh, doing something, when uh, he wasn't working. Um, well, so probably this this is it about Booker T. Washington uh, and uh, well, as a conclusion we think that this culture is not shows not only uh, the long way that uh, black people in America had to go but uh, it is uh, also very characteristic of the modern American society as well because uh, there is a ladder for everyone in it and uh, no matter how long it is and uh, how difficult your way up may be if you are determined to achieve your goals, if you are a hardworking person, you uh, eventually will uh, make it to the top. Uh, women, and they are singing some church songs. You see the hymns in their hands, and it represents that uh, religion took a very big place in American history during this time. What else? You see two fiddlers, and they represent. Uh, the music which was very typical of the frontier of America. So the frontier is the borders of America. What else? You see two women and they are singing and they are playing a very interesting instrument which is called a lap, a lap dulcimer. So a lap dulcimer is very typical of Appalachia area, Appalachia region, mountain region. So mountain region, religion, uh, the frontier of America and also a cowboy, of course, a cowboy with a saddle. So everything is combined, really. And of course we have an Afro-American man, yes, an Afro-American man with a banjo. So banjo is a, a musical instrument which was brought to America with slaves. I you know about the slavery in America and so on. And besides, if you uh, if you look uh, in the background of the picture, you can see uh, three figures, yes, three persons. And uh, I'm also told that these are Negro, uh, I'm sorry, Afro-American women. Uh, so they are dancing, they are uh, just uh, waving, uh, waving the, their hands to the sheep and so on. And besides, if you look in the center of the picture, you can see the engine. So the engine represents the progress which took place in America during those times. So progress had both negative and positive characters, uh, characteristics. And besides, uh, I was asked a very interesting question about the hues, yes, the black hue and the white one. So maybe it represents a positive and negative. But maybe not, who knows? Very interesting question, I'm going to search about that. Uh, and so, the last thing that you wanted, uh, which I wanted to tell you about the dates, yes? Um, so, Thomas Hart Benton, he didn't like the way uh, how he depicted the engine, how he depicted the train. And he decided to repaint it somehow. And when he was singing in front of the picture, uh, just uh, just thinking over how he can do that, uh, he has got a head to talk attack, and uh, so this is how the story ended. Not very positive, but still, so very strange his uh, story. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> March for writing words, which occurred in America in 1965. At this time, a serious problem uh, raised among the community as Afro Americans were still uh, denied to vote. Uh, so, during his speech, uh, Martin Luther King uh, decided uh, to tell the, the community to rise up uh, against. Uh, this right and uh, to go to the march. Actually, uh, at first this, uh, it was uh, a very peaceful uh, march as people were not uh, armed, uh, but then it turned out uh, that the gov government and uh, policemen uh, were against it. Uh, so they met uh, people during their way to the bridge uh, and uh, tried uh, to stop it. 
uh, but the and uh, the uh, leader of uh, this match, uh, Hussein Williams, there is, uh, tried to speak with a policeman, but uh, he failed. And so uh, all, almost all of these people were uh, injured with the tear gas, uh, with the sticks, and uh, the event uh, got the name the Bloody Sunday. Um, for sure it was a very sad um, event in the history of the America, but uh, on the other hand, um, it had a positive effect as uh, in 1965 uh, a right for good for Afro Americans uh, was accepted. Great. That's a picture by Lutz of the veteran in the new field. Uh, it uh, depicts uh, the veteran uh, who uh, had uh, recently returned uh, from the front because uh, most uh, soldiers uh, had been uh, farmers before the Civil War. Uh, that man uh, calls uh, an old fashioned uh, thief uh, that uh, evokes uh, the Grim Reaper, uh, recalls uh, the war's uh, how, uh, death and expresses uh, their uh, grief upon uh, Lincoln's uh, death. The farmer's uh, military jacket uh, and uh, canteen uh, lie uh, discarded uh, in the foreground, uh, almost covered by uh, the falling uh, stacks of rain. The artist uh, himself uh, was a, a sort of uh, veteran. Uh, he uh, served uh, on the front as an illustrator for Harper's Weekly and uh, he made the military report. Uh, when he returned uh, to uh, civilian uh, life, uh, he began to paint well. Uh, and he continued to, uh, to, pay, uh, to paint uh, the uh, pictures of ordinary life, uh, such as uh, the picture. Uh, uh, they, in the field, uh, in the title, uh, 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 country in uh, the field of the grain, uh, it means uh, a battlefield uh, because it's some of the bloodiest uh, uh, battles of uh, the Civil War uh, uh, fought uh, in uh, that field. Uh, there is another association uh, with the field of uh, fallen soldiers. Mm. So it is a class that was created in 1964 and its title is uh, the Dam. Uh, this class represents the uh, Harlem and Black uh, district. Um, all these, all people there are black people and all of them are, all their faces are made of different uh, patches. And it means that all of these people are very different, they still create one community. And uh, this clash was created uh, um, at uh, the height of the civil rights movement when black people fought for their rights. Uh, so it was a, a difficult time for them because there was still segregation and discrimination. Um, and that's why they also put a dove on the top of this picture. Um, because it uh, represents peace. So they also wanted uh, uh, this uh, bird to protect these people and uh, find uh, their way in life. But also uh, there is a black cat here and people say that it represents a threat for, for the dove and for the peace. Um, and um, the author of this uh, clash was also a black person who was from the south. Uh, but he lived in uh, Harlem uh, since uh, childhood. And uh, he communicated, uh, his family communicated with, uh, with such people as uh, uh, du, du Bois, uh, who fought for, uh, for, uh, for rights for black people, and uh, with um, uh, different uh, jazz musicians. And people say that there is uh, music in, there, in his works, uh, because jazz is a uh, music that um, is. Um, that mixes different styles and his works are also are made of different things such as foil, paper, wool, mm -hmm. magazines and so on. Uh, and also um, there was a tradition on the south uh, when black people made patched uh, quilts and uh, his work, uh, works uh, also remind uh, of such things. So uh, his background influenced uh, his, um, uh, his art very much. Wonderful. Thank you.